flank. Good feet. How are you doing? Pretty good. Alright, uh, with my name is Ralph Long. Keep it down. My name is Ralph Long. I'm a county attorney for Garland County. I've held that position for almost 25 years, and I will tell you this is the first time we have ever had a meeting with the city and the Corn Court. It is long overdue, and I hope by the experience that happens tonight that we're able to do this more frequently. But the issue that we're going to be discussing tonight is extremely important. The city people, it's extremely important to the county people, and so here's kind of what we wanted to lay some ground rules down. Bottom line is, we felt like because of all the misinformation and miscommunication and the innuendos and all the stuff going out there, it would be important for all of us to get together, get with Mr. Holden, and let him explain kind of the research and the, and the survey and the analysis he's done. We want to give our quorum court and our city board a chance to ask him questions. Uh, we want to keep this fairly short. We want to be done by 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, we're shutting it down no matter what. And if you want to have powwows afterwards, that's fine. But I expect it to be over by 7 o'clock. Also, double the public is clearly invited and extremely well attended. I want to thank all of you for coming out tonight on a rainy night. Uh, because I know. I tell people when you're in court, I know you've got some place else you would rather be. And, and I understand that. And then obviously this is such an important issue that so many people, we thought we'd have five or ten maybe shows. So this is a great turnout. And we appreciate the public's participation and the public's interest. However, the public will not be able to ask questions. This is not a question and answer session. This is merely for informational purposes only. Uh, the court, court members and our city board will be able to ask any questions they desire to ask. As far as the public is concerned, it is not really a public meeting. Those meetings will probably occur later if the fact is a need to. But we certainly are glad you are here. We would ask everybody to be respectful. And at this time, um, Brian, is there anything you want to take over from here? I'm Ron Albright. I'm the city attorney. And uh, I, I appreciate uh, all the members of the governing body. Uh, sitting down together uh, to listen to this information, uh, share ideas with one another. Um, we have with us tonight Stuart Nolan. Uh, Stuart is the uh, president and principal of Crist Engineering. Uh, Crist is one of the leading uh, engineering firms in the state of Arkansas. Uh, Crist, uh, along with many other engineering firms, uh, uh, submitted what are called statements of qualifications uh, to be able to do work for the city in this capacity and going through a rating and ranking process, they were chosen uh, as, as the highest rated and ranked firm. Uh, Stewart has 38 years of experience in engineering, uh, received his uh, bachelor's in 75 and his master's in 76, uh, has worked uh, all over the state and, and in Oklahoma, uh, has worked for various uh, municipalities, uh, large <coughs> sort of districts, um, has had multiple uh, plans uh, approved by the MQ, Department of Health, uh, he has a vast array of experience, and uh, he is here tonight to share with you uh, his findings uh, based upon his study and his recommendations with regard to water supply. And uh, as Ralph indicated, that's the limitation on this endeavor that we have tonight. Uh, questions can be asked of Stuart relative to his, his study, the work that he has done, uh, and his opinions about that, uh, but uh, not go into uh, the policy decisions that governing bodies uh, make during business meetings. Uh, this is just information from Stuart, and we appreciate him being here for us tonight. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. Again, my name is Stuart Nolan. I'm with Christ Engineers, uh, and our principal office is in Little Rock. Uh, I want you all to know I've got somebody here that I've heard from time to do uh, Dave Reagan. Uh, just a, should come as no surprise to anybody in Arkansas, right? That, uh, maybe that dates us both a little bit, but that's okay too. Um, as Brian indicated, our firm was hired, actually it was late uh, 2011, and we were given some pretty specific instructions by the city at that point in time. They wanted us to identify a future water supply or supplies for the city and implement uh, at, at least one, if not more, of those as an initial project. 
What I'm asking this group to do is to join with the board and endorse their decision to go to Lake Gray for the reasons that we mentioned. We're not eliminating any options by doing this. In fact, we are encouraging the city to include all options in their long-range plan. And I think if we could ask, uh, ask everybody to consider doing that, that it would be a very important step to, uh, to unify in this effort. So that's my vision for the future, and I would encourage you to, to, to join us in, in taking a look and consider doing that. Now, with that, um, uh, I'd be, uh, I'm open for questions. Uh, it's difficult to convince anybody that we have a shortage of water when they're walking in here with umbrellas. And when I ran for District 6 director, it became clear that the number one item of concern for my constituents at the time I ran was the shortage of water. But it is really difficult to convince anybody that we need water when they're driving over bridges all day long. I don't know how to convince anybody that we have a real shortage of water other than just the numbers themselves and what uh, the state of Arkansas is telling us that we're short of water. You're looking at the city, which is the small part. You're looking at the county, which is the bigger part. We're all in bed with this problem. And I don't think you recognize how important it is. Yeah. And talk about the county, not just the city. Because it is the county that's you know, at risk here just as much as the city, and probably more so. Go back and look at the numbers. It, 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 it might be prudent to go ahead and stick with what we have because, because when you get to about 80% of capacity, the health department starts calling. And you don't know when that 80 is going to occur. It may be 60% one year, maybe 90 the next, totally weather related. Okay. Well, you know, by that same reason, then, reasoning, then it's unrealistic to say we have a water emergency because of one year or two years. Well, actually, this, this close, trend has occurred over. Of not, of not even capacity, but approaching the health department's limit. We've got property owners in the county who are being denied service because of this so-called emergency. That's, that's unacceptable, and it cannot continue. And, and I realize that Garland County, outside the city limits, it's been um, said by different county city employees to be a burden on the city. And it is my intention to relieve the city of that burden. And we're, we're doing everything we can that's possible in conjunction with the city, hopefully, to make sure that the county and the city have plenty of water for the future. And I, I like we said earlier, I applaud the city's efforts to, to secure water for the future. That's very important. And I, I don't live in the city. I don't represent anybody that lives in the city. But I do represent people in my, myself, I'm on city water. And so it does affect me, it affects my family, it affects my constituents when their water bills are going to go up. Have you done any kind of analysis on what those are going to be? But I just want to make the point to the board that we've got an unacceptable situation when property owners are being denied the service that, number one, the residents of the county paid for it to be installed, paid for the capital improvement and have continued to pay one and a half times the city rate for that time paying for city improvements as well. So I don't know that that's something you want to be relieved of, that extra income. And I think that we should all be working together here. I don't think we'd be here tonight as a group just because of the, the degrade. We wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have a full room if it was just about the degrade project. The reason people are here is because people are being denied service. Jobs are being smashed and not allowed to be created. And that's unacceptable. That hurts the schools, that hurts property owners, that hurts county government, and it does hurt city government as well. Brian, do you want to speak to that? I mean, if, is that a question for me? <laughs> that was a statement. Thank you. <laughs>
Mayor, that, that is a policy decision for the board to make. Yeah, but let's say it's just a water decision. Is there a crisis? Are we in a well, water let, crisis? Let me, let me say this. You don't want to get flashed. No, no I, don't, I don't mind answering that question. Uh, the city's been working on this for since all five, I think. I think it's time to do something. And I'll tell you what it's going to take. It's going to take a couple of hot, dry summers, which occurred a couple of years ago. I'm not saying they're going to occur this year. That's all it's going to take. And then there's there's going to be a need for us. And here's the, here's the deal. If we, if we were to start full board them off, you'd be three plus years for those high service funds to be operated that water plant. Now, you want to make a bet with it? I'm not, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, and that's why I'm not saying they shouldn't go to the grave. That's why I applaud their let's see, what I'm saying, what I'm saying is this. I think it's prudent <coughs> to move forward at this point in time exactly. based on what we've seen in the past and what we can expect to occur in the future. But there's hope for the future. Move forward three years. We've got all kinds of hope. Well, look at all that. We've got all kinds. We can't wait three years. But let's say right now, are we in a distressed time? Is this a crisis period? Today. Mayor, that is not my call. I mean, just as water, an engineer. As water supply. I mean, we're, are, are we, we in crisis? Uh, again, that. <laughs> Come on, baby, step out there. Let me ask this question. Um, at a recent meet meeting, the city manager said that the water loss was approximately 40%. ADEQ has said that if the city um, would implement conservation practices, and I live in the city, and I represent mostly city um, uh, citizens at, at the county level, um, even in 2012, when it was as, as dry as it was, there was no implementation of any form of conservation, uh, metered water, um, odd day, even day watering of your lawns, there was nothing. If the, the conservation measures that ADEQ has recommended and the 40% loss gets reduced to a more standard loss of, of around 12 to 15%, could we not delay maybe uh, 5 to 10 years so that we can start building um, the, the capital resources that we, that we need to expand? If, 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 yes, maybe yes. But I, I think the an the general answer to that is you need to be real careful about that. Because what if that doesn't occur? What I mean, if what doesn't occur? If all they the things that you said. Your whole proposition is based on ifs. Yeah. If we have hot weather. No. Be short of water. No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. Principally, <laughs> it's based on a projection of 1% growth. For the city? For the city. <coughs> I was going to say because the city hasn't gone in front of 20 years. Or the service center. <laughs> or the service center. That's correct. I mean, it's, it's very difficult for the county to grow when they're being denied water. <laughs> <laughs>
to all the areas versus just, you know, uh, spurring it off of the city to looks like potential growth of everything outside the city. Yeah. Would you repeat the question? <laughs> My, my deal is, the city is not growing. The, the city is not growing. The number of houses in the city are, are roughly are pretty close to the same. The growth is happening outside the city. You have it growing in the north part of the, in the county in Hot Springs Village area of that. You've got 70 west growing, or the west part of the county. And the south side of the county are some of the fastest growing in the county. And that's where the demand for water is coming. The Walmart was growing to the west side of the city. It was denied that. So, Obviously, y'all looking at needing more water to be able to push outside the city. So if the county comes in and says, why don't we form a county-wide water district, then the city's not going to need to do that. And I think what we're looking at from the county level is we're saying, can, can we not hold off so that we can look at this and how do we fix this for a whole county issue than, than just a small part of the county? So as an engineer, would it not be wiser for us to look and how do we service the whole county versus just what would be maybe economically beneficial to the city? Well, let me say again, all projections included the service territory that the city currently has. But the service territory does not cover the entire county. And it as is, it stands it does right not. now, and as the, it stands the other right parts now, of the county are served by other utilities, and there are some parts of the county that are currently unserved just as there were 30 years ago and 30 years before that. So that's an evolutionary process that takes time. What we're looking at is trying to build a consensus for the entire county because more than half of the accounts, as you pointed out, are, are county accounts. And they're paying one and a half times the rate. That extra money is helping the city's program. And we, we don't have a problem right now with that, other than the fact, as, as Justice McKee has, has pointed out, we have uh, a number of instances where water has been denied or water has been used as a leverage. So we need to reevaluate this. You're asking us to give you uh, a carte blanche approval tonight, and I don't think you're going to get that, not from the county justices, to, to approve a program that does not take all of our county residents into consideration. And I just don't think that's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you. question you wanted to ask him, but well, this is not going to become a discussion. I'm, I'm, no, what we need to do, though, is reconvene at a later date, and, and I think this is an issue that's important enough for us to do that, and then you guys have some committees or whatever and do that. But uh, this is not, never was it ever intended for a discussion between the board, the quorum court, or Mr. It was not so Davis, or Mr. Yes, it was. I sent a letter. I don't want to go there, but I sent a letter that outlined exactly what I expected this to happen. And I would ask you to reach, not go to okay. ask him anything you want to. Two questions. One is, I think uh, a lot of people are concerned about their water bill. Is there an estimate how much this will affect uh, what we're paying now? How much more? You know, I, I saw, hold on just a minute. Uh, I think the city, I think the, the city has engaged, I've got a, Water supply frequently asked questions sheet that the city has prepared. <clears throat> and let me just read for everybody what it says. How much will these projects cost the average customer? Economics.com, the rate consultant, has compared the current rate plan with two alternative scenarios for projects costing 80 to 100 million, and, and the impact is less than $10 per month for the average user. The comparison reveals that for a city residential customer who uses an average of 5,000 gallons per month, by 2019, the impact of the Lake of Great project under the $80 million 
scenario is an increase of an additional $7.65 per month. Under the $100 million scenario, the impact is an increase of an additional $9.08 per month. That's what, that's what this says. True, this is a, everybody uses this term, it's a garbage in, garbage out thing. We've got to make sure we got good information going in so we can get good information going out. And that is our goal, and we will get there. I just, we're just not there yet. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment on that. Uh, those, are, those are some of the factors. Our, our goal was to get any and all sources worked up as quickly as we could, and we didn't know which, which direction was going to pop first, if you will. Uh, you know, the, the Blakely Dam had a seepage issue. They were studying that, and, uh, and uh, we were worried about authorization of, of water, and, and the debris was, was, a, was an opportunity, and so both of those were being worked up with, with uh, great determination from the staff. We, we weren't certain which one was going to materialize first. And uh, if we worked up on Lake Washita and they, and they said, no, we're not going to allow you to pull that, and we spent two or three years on it, pull from there, then, then we would have wasted an opportunity of three years of working towards Lake DeGray. And if Lake, if we went to Lake DeGray and, and we couldn't get water from Central Arkansas water, and then we would have wasted that time. So our goal was to go out and, and have a multi-pronged approach knowing that even if one or the other started to develop, we weren't going to exclude the one that wasn't. Because again, we were looking for a long term, you know, many, many years, well past our generation and the generation behind us. So, you know, when, so when we were able to make the deal with the gray, we needed to move on. Not to the exclusion. Nothing stopped on Washington. So we could continue to work on the gray, knowing that Washita would be coming in later, because we're in a, a group with other municipal, municipalities dealing on Washita. So, uh, so that was our approach there, Tom, was to try to get any and all available water, work the one that was going to come up first, but never exclude the one that, that might come on a little later. Myself, you, you were hoping to leave here with a unanimous um, uh, endorsement of your program. Um, until we have additional meetings and we can talk about the policies and the problems that um, that currently exist, and look at a countywide uh, answer, I, for one, am not giving uh, my approval. I ask you to consider, and that, that that that's what I ask you to do, and and, and that consideration can go on. You I'd like to say you're not a comment a little bit. You know, I, I want to double on what Ralph Bohm said. You know, this is the first time that these two bodies have been together. And, and I do recognize that we look at things uh, from a different perspective because we come from different directions. And we have different constituents. And we recognize that. Water's one, there's other issues. But I, I think it's important for us to hear from experts like Stewart and and, and then have work sessions amongst ourselves because we have a foundation of knowledge that we can begin to build from. Now, we might not accept it. We might interpret it differently. And that's all fine, you know. As long as we're all being open and honest with ourselves and, and those we represent. And so I encourage us to continue to have these meetings. You know, it might be three times a year, maybe four, maybe six. It may be a session like with Stuart, or it may be like Mary, like you're saying. Okay, there are some other issues that we have to deal with with policy that, that you know, would, would cause us to come together. But I'd rather have it here than on, on the front page of the paper with misinformation. I mean, let's get the information and let's move forward together again. You know, if, if, if Stuart's all wrong, we'll fire him. <laughs> I mean, he said he'd like to, if, he, if he got fired today, he'd at least say he had two options for it. You know, but, you know, it's not the first time I fired him. So, uh, so no, I, I mean, they're doing a great job, and, and I know it is a complex, and we look at the issue, and we look at things from our own perspective. You know, I have the county's interest at heart. I met with people on this issue that you were talking about, not getting off Ralph in that, in that other area, but, you know, there's a way to work it out.
Stuart just said, if we can move forward, and Mary, if everybody moves forward, we can have this online on January of 18. Even if XYZ wanted to start building today, they weren't going to be online. We, if we have clarity, we can make decisions. But you're not going to have clarity unless we can talk about more things than just the proposed plan. We don't even have... Well, I'm saying clarity of knowing the when the plan's coming online and when the water demand is. That's big. The city has had, what, three, three uh, different engineering proposals uh, for water? With different different places as to where they wanted to put the intakes, where they wanted to do things, cost involved. Um, I've heard cost. Uh, the the one two years ago that got put out that was over two hundred million dollars. So until until we can be satisfied with the direction that it's going, that it's going to benefit all the citizens of this county, and that um, the plan is going to be workable and beneficial for everybody involved, since half of the uh, customers, our county customers, um, it, it would be premature to ask us to approve this plan. And more than one issue. It's not just a water issue. We're dealing with. It is a policy issue we're dealing with. And the water has been used as an excuse in a lot of areas for what policy has been done.